This Spartan build might be the most versatile play style I have ever played in New World. In this video, I will show you all the gear you need, what attributes you should use, and which combos will make you dominate in combat. Let's get started. All right, let's get into it. There are two attribute loadouts for the Spartan build. The first has 67 strength, 150 dexterity, and 300 constitution and favors a tank playstyle. The second has 116 strength, 200 dexterity, and 200 constitution and favors more damage. The tank Spartan has the highest HP at about 16,000. The grit on all melee attacks will increase the success rate of light and heavy attacks applying cooldown reductions, buffs, debuffs, and rune glass combos on the target. 150 dexterity will reduce the cost of dodging in medium armor to 30 stamina. The remaining 67 points go into strength to increase the base weapon damage above sword and spear. The damage Spartan is built with 117 strength to get an extra 5% strike and slash damage. 200 dexterity for reduction in dodge costs and a 10% bonus to backstab damage. These attributes maximize weapon damage, which will increase the heal on Leeching Cyclone and increase the base damage for all non-critical hits. 200 Constitution provides about 13,000 HP and a 10% increase in physical and elemental armor. The armor for the Spartan consists of a heavy helmet, medium chest, medium gloves, light pants, heavy boots, all with Century Constitution. Your gear should have four to five pieces of resilient, four pieces of freedom, two to three elemental aversion, and two to three shirking fortification. Pick up leeching cyclone or enfeebling skewer on your armor to complement the perk on the spear. Fortifying shield rush can go on an armor piece or directly on the round shield. Fortifying perforate is also a decent perk to pick up on armor to further stack fortify buffs. There are two ways you can build the armor rune glass. The first is five leeching paired with a hardy leeching ring like smooth bone ring to get about 10% life steal on all damage done. The life steal is great for sustain and will help the PVX playstyle. The second option is to build energizing armor rune glass paired with a hardy invigorated punishment ring like the champion's ring. 
the energizing stamina on hit supports an aggressive PvP playstyle that synergizes well with medium dodging. Two Opal and three Onyx gems are recommended for the Rune Glass. The amulet should be built with Constitution, Health, Divine, or Stamina Recovery for the second perk. Flame, Slash, Thrust Protection, or Shirking in Power for the third perk. I swap my amulet according to which type of damage is most dominant for my opponents. A Shirking in Power perk is great at synergizing damage with the Medium Armor Dodge for a more aggressive playstyle. Use the Vine as a second perk when running a life stealing build to buff self heals and potions. For the earrings, run either Doom's Chance Earring or the Champion's Earring, depending on whether you need more strength or constitution in your build. The Spartan Sword should have Rogue, Plague Strikes, and any elemental attunement with a Cruel Rune Glass Gem. The Spear should have Keenly Jagged, Sorting Strikes, and either Enfeebling Skewer or Leeching Cyclone for the last perk. Use a Gambit or Cruel Rune Glass Gem for the Spear or try a Retaliate Gem on the Sword. The Shield should have Enchanted, Keenly Jagged, and Keen or Fortifying Shield Rush to pair best with the Sword. I'm one of the lucky few who has a Legendary Shield, so I pick up an extra Sturdy perk. Spartan build starts with one point in Achilles heal, empowered stab so we can increase our empower by 30% for five seconds on successful heavy attacks, one point in freeing justice to give ourselves a cleanse on one debuff on heavy attacks, leaping strike all the way down to cowardly punishment to pick up the 30% slow for three seconds, critical precision, confidence, opportunist, and precision so that we can get the leadership buff. For the Defender Tree, you want to pick up Shield Rush, Shield Bash, the first perk in Shield Rush, and the first perk in Shield Bash. At this point, you need to make a decision. Do you want to get more stamina management and pick up Invigorating Bulwark so that you get 15 stamina whenever you hit a target with Shield Bash or Shield Rush? Or do you want to get 50% more damage on the third attack of your Light Attack Chain? Make the call. The next point you want to put into Concussive Bash, you get an extra second duration to your stun. Important note, this stun is not affected by freedom. Lastly, you want to put one point into Intimidating Rush. This way, when you land a Shield Rush on a target, you're applying a Weaken, a Slow, and the Rune Glass Dot, which will help buff your Spear damage. For your last point, you can decide to pick up an extra 10% healing, similar to Divine, through Recuperation. Or you can give yourself more mitigation for magic through elemental resistance. For the spear, you want to start in the zoner tree with deadly reach. Then get refreshing reach so we get 15% cooldown reduction on successful heavy attacks. Pick up cyclone, invigorating crits, and invigorating combo underneath cyclone. In the impaler tree, we're going to pick up skewer and go all the way down. We're going to pick up perforate and go all the way down. We're then going to get Exposed Wounds, Refreshing Jabs, Aggressive Maneuvers, and Exploited Weakness. You also want to pick up Finishing Blows, so you deal 50% increased damage against targets with less than 30% health. For the last two points, you can either give your Cyclone a pushback of 3 meters. This is really good for peeling targets off of Sacreds or Oblivions. Or you could pick up an extra 20% damage against targets with active grit. Or you could get exacerbating crits and extend the duration of your spear debuffs by 20%. The Spartan field is versatile and can adapt to changes in combat with all the tools at its disposal. Here are all the buffs, debuffs, slows, cooldown reductions, stamina management, staggers, grit abilities, and what our sword heavy attack will do with the build. Make sure to pause the video and use this as a reference when learning the build. Shield Bash is one of your most important abilities on Sword and Shield, and timing your stun can make or break your success in combat. Use your Shield Bash to counter Bruiser Shockwaves, interrupt healers, and setting up a damage buff or debuff combo. These are the combos I recommend you learn to really utilize the full strength of your Shield Bash. If you land a Shield Bash, follow up with a Heavy Attack and immediately cancel the Heavy Attack with Leaping Strike. Use Shield Bash and Skewer to guarantee landing your Skewer Bleed. 
Use Shield Bash followed with Cyclone to enable a double grit combo to ignore any knockdowns or staggers. Use a heavy attack and immediately cancel the heavy attack with a Shield Bash for a good quick burst combo. Shield Rush is one of the strongest abilities in New World. It's great for peeling enemies off of a teammate or interrupting your opponent's abilities. Shield Rush has grit, so it can be used to counter stagger and knockdown abilities like Wrecking Ball and Sweep. Use Shield Rush to apply a slow, weaken, and rune glass dot simultaneously. This will trigger a 30% damage increase for your next spirit ability like Cyclone. Use Shield Rush as a gap closer to initiate or escape a fight when out of stamina. Leaping Strike is my favorite ability in New World. It is the strongest melee gap closer and is an excellent executability when finishing off targets running away. Leaping Strike has a lot of give. You can bend your character around obstacles to surprise your enemy or rapidly ascend or descend ramps, walls, or cliffs. The best move after a Leaping Strike is throwing light attacks. The majority of players who get hit by Leaping Strike will immediately dodge, so if you miss a light attack, no big deal. The light attacks will help you stay on target and will prevent your enemy from sprinting. I will use a combination of one, two, or even all three light attacks on the target. The goal is to get as much damage on the target during the three second slow from Leaping Strike. Use the three light attack chain or a shield rush to continue the slow debuffs. Remember, we get a 20% damage increase on slow targets, so maintaining slows are critical. Landing Skewer is one of the most important skills to learn on a spear build. A 44% weakened debuff can save yourself or a teammate from a big burst combo like a bruiser's detonate. Ideally, you want to land Skewer after Shield Rush to maximize its damage. Be patient when using your Skewer. Wait for your opponent to stam out, get stunned, or get caught in a potion animation. Try not to fish for an open field Skewer. Most likely, you will miss since the tracking can be very unforgiving. I usually start with one or two Spear Light Attacks and cancel the last Light Attack animation with Skewer. You can also use Skewer as a last resort gap closer to escape trouble. Perforate is a great ability to brawl opponents with. For every hit you land, you will apply a Ren and Weaken stack and give yourself a stack of Fortify. Use Perforate to set up a burst combo or peel for a teammate. If you land all three hits, stay on your spear and aggressively pursue your target. You can stack Shirky Fort with the Perforate Fortify for extra mitigation when brawling with light attacks and dodge. Cyclone is an awesome and incredibly satisfying spirit ability. Use Cyclone to avoid staggers and knockdowns and apply a 50% slow to all targets. The Season 2 Pass update will buff Cyclone's damage by 35%, speed up the animation, and will now hit crown targets. With these improvements and the insane amount of sustain Cyclone produces, I would not be surprised if every spear build started running it. I like to use Cyclone when I'm low stamina because a critical hit will yield 50 stamina from one target. You can also use the 3 meter pushback to move opponents out of Sacreds, Oblivion, or off a ledge. Maximize the self heal by using Cyclone in clumps. A 50% slow will buff any melee's damage that has a cool gem or 200 strength. So you may have noticed me fighting a group in the background throughout this video. This fight lasted about 11 minutes and demonstrates the survivability of the tank Spartan with 10% life stealing. If you want to watch the full unedited version, click the link in the description. Otherwise, stick around for some commentary. You know, one thing that really surprised me with this build is the sustain that you can get from throwing strikes and just 10% leeching. I'm essentially spamming heavy attacks and weakened debuffs on, if I can, two targets if possible. And always avoiding oblivion, trying to knock them out of their sacreds. Here you'll see me, I'm going to line a sight around the camp, wind up a heavy attack, go for a leaking strike combo, pop that stone form back into heavy attacks on the spear for the cooldown reduction. Now I actually have some health. So the ratio goes from a one on three to a one on two, which means that I can actually start going on the offensive. I found from playing a lot of arenas in this build that one on ones are really no problem and one on twos are doable, but a one V three, the other combatants have to really make some mistakes or I have to get lucky. But here we're just leveraging stone form, 
rapidly swapping between light attacks and heavy attacks so that I can keep multiple rune glass procs on multiple targets, along with keenly jagged, which is on both weapons. This way, my heart rune generation will be very, very quick because I'm getting ticks from all of those hits. I think here we land the Plague Strikes debuff. We're trying to knock him out of his sacred and go for the kill with Perforate. Now we're on a two on two. This fight's pretty much easy from here on forward. Hit him with the Shield Rush combo, going in to spear the heavy attack. Now we're just doing some chops. Nice little Perforate. Cyclone to put the slow so that my Bruiser does some more damage. Heavy attack for the Plague Strikes. Perforate for the Execute. And that's pretty much the fight. I want to give a special shout out and thanks to these guys for dedicating their time and resources to developing this build video. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time. Remember, don't ever stop fighting.